This video is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. The mechanized infantry formed the basis of Canada's regular force infantry. Riding into battle in LAV's six infantry fighting vehicles, they're the tip of the spear, combining the mobility and firepower of the LAV with the dismounted bayonet strength of Canadian infantry. Based on official sources and feedback from Canadian mechanized infantrymen, we're going to look at the organization and equipment of the current Canadian mechanized rifle company and the units they're a part of. The Mechanized Rifle Company is the maneuver element of the Canadian Mechanized Infantry Battalion. Such battalions are split between the Royal Canadian Regiment, the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry, and the Royal 22nd Regiment. Each battalion consists of a battalion headquarters, three rifle companies, one combat support company, and one administration company. The Combat Support Company enhances the combat capability of the rifle companies, including reconnaissance, signals, a mortar platoon with eight 81mm mortars, snipers, assault pioneers, and dismounted tow anti-tank guided missiles. The Administration Company, on the other hand, is focused on sustainment, including supply, transport, maintenance, and medical services. This battalion is in turn one type of maneuver element within a mechanized brigade group. Canada's geographically based 2nd, 3rd, and 4th Divisions each have an active mechanized brigade group in addition to reserve brigade groups based around light infantry. The mechanized brigade group is Canada's principal combined arms active duty formation. Each group consists of a brigade group headquarters and signal squadron, a battalion-sized armored regiment mounted in Leopard 2s, two mechanized infantry battalions, one light roll infantry battalion, a battalion-sized combat engineer regiment, a battalion-sized artillery regiment drawing from the Royal Canadian Horse Artillery, and a service battalion. Combined arms formations are then formed from these assets at the battalion and company levels called combat teams. A hypothetical combat team task organization could include a mechanized infantry company, two tank troops equivalent to platoons from the tank regiment, a combat engineer platoon from the combat engineer regiment, and an FOO and FAC party from the artillery regiment to provide forward observation and air control. Before we get into the rifle company, let's start with some of the small arms and light weapons they field. The standard service weapon of the Canadian Army is the C7A2. It's a domestically produced derivative of the Colt Model 715 that's undergone significant modernization. It features several modifications and improvements that differentiate it from the original design, which resemble elements from both the American M16A2 and M16A1. It's distinctive for its green furniture and telescoping stock, while still being a full-length rifle. It chambers 5.56, features safe semi-full auto fire selection, and mounts a C79A2 Elcan 3.4x magnification gun sight on a weaver rail. Although it doesn't have the full-length quad rail handguard of the similar American M16A4, it does feature options for mounting attachments such as flashlights, IR illuminators, and foregrips. The C7A2 shortened companion is the C8A3, which although less common, can still be found in Canadian mechanized infantry. It usually goes to leadership positions first, as they have first dibs, and after that, it more or less comes down to the availability and the preferences of the unit's senior NCOs. Positions within a platoon that could get the C8A3 include signalers, grenadiers, or members of a special weapons detachment. Both the C7A2 and C8A3 can accept an M203A1 underbarrel grenade launcher with a SOPMOD profile 9-inch barrel. This indirect weapon is one of the rifle section's main means of projecting explosives, the other being the M72A5 disposable light anti-tank weapon, which is also carried by a rifleman in the rifle section. This system is more or less effective against softer targets and light armored vehicles, but is not considered the primary anti-tank support weapon for the company. That would be the Carl Gustav M2 recoilless rifle, which acts as a platoon level anti-tank support weapon and is sometimes also employed at the company level, although less commonly. It fires 84mm rounds, with an official basic load set at 6 rounds, although this depends on the mission. 
it's typically crewed by two individuals. In terms of explosive chuckers, a C-16 close area suppression system, a 40mm automatic grenade launcher similar in capability to the Mark 19, is usually held at the company level and only used in the defense. And now for the machine guns, the C9A2 is Canada's standard section level light machine gun. It's a domestically produced derivative of the FN Mini-Me, similar to the American M249 and Chambers 556. Like other weapons in the section, they mount the C79A2 gun sight. Meanwhile, the heavier C6 general purpose machine gun acts as a platoon support weapon. It's a belt-fed machine gun derived from the FN Mag, chambering 762 NATO. Most C6s are older, featuring wood stocks and no rail mount for optics. However, the new C6A1 flex being phased in has rails on the top covers for optics, other attachment points, and a polymer stock. And lastly, the standard service pistol of the Canadian Army is the Browning High Power. Like with the carbine, it could be generally said that who gets a pistol comes down to both availability and the preferences of leadership. However, they're generally less useful and not as coveted as a C8. Now on to the company organization. Each rifle company consists of a company HQ and three rifle platoons. The company comes under the overall command of a major. They're assisted by the company's second in command or 2IC, who's usually a senior captain and in charge of the company HQ's rear echelon and attached support. They're further assisted by the LAV captain. When the company commander dismounts, the LAV captain remains mounted and can command the empty Zulu vehicles in conjunction with the platoon LAV sergeants. The company's senior non-commissioned officer is the company's sergeant major, ranking master warrant officer. Equivalent to an American first sergeant, they're similarly focused on administration, receiving ammunition and casualty reports from the platoon warrant officers. The company HQ is supported by a signals element, consisting of a signals NCO and a company signaler or radio operator, typically both ranking master corporal. The latter also has the task of supervising the platoon signalers. The company also has a stores and transport section. This element is led by the company quartermaster, who's a warrant officer on the way to becoming a master warrant officer, and it further consists of a 2IC ranking master corporal, a transport sergeant, a transport driver, and two storemen. There are several vehicle crew in the HQ, but how many actually depends on the exact number of vehicles the company runs. Mechanized infantrymen from the 1st and 2nd Patricias told Battle Order that their company HQs had either 3 or 4 LAVs and 4 MAC Defense MSVS SMP 8x8 trucks, one of which tows a water trailer. The LAV-6 is the most modern infantry fighting vehicle in Canada's lineup, essentially an updated LAV-3 that features among other things a double V hull and blast protected seats to protect against mines and IEDs. It's similar in capability to the US Marine LAV-25 or US Army Striker Dragoon, featuring a manned turret armed with an M242 Bushmaster 25mm autocannon, coaxial C6 general purpose machine gun, and pinto mounted C6 GPMG or C9 light machine gun. Each LAV has a driver and a gunner, with the company commander's LAV also having a backup crew commander to take over when the company commander dismounts. Typically, the company commander, LAV captain, and company 2IC all command their own LAV. In a 3 LAV variant, the company sergeant major rides in the company commander's LAV. However, in the 4 LAV variant, the company sergeant major commands their own LAV. In addition to the organic elements, the company HQ also usually receives attachments from within the battalion. These typically include an LAV-2 bison ambulance staffed by three medics. One would typically rank master corporal, another corporal, and one between private and corporal. The lower ranked of the three would also act as the driver. Additionally, a mobile recovery vehicle variant of the Bison can be attached from the battalion maintenance platoon. This usually would be staffed by a weapons technician, a vehicle technician, an electronic and optronic technician. Sometimes a second mobile repair team Bison can also be attached. Now to the rifle platoons, the rifle company's close combat elements. Each platoon consists of a small platoon headquarters, a weapons detachment, and three rifle sections. The platoon comes under the overall command of a lieutenant usually, but sometimes a captain. The commander is assisted by a platoon second in command, sometimes called a platoon warrant, ranking warrant officer and handling the platoon's administrative matters and discipline. 
They would usually ride with one of the rifle sections separate from the platoon commander, often in the depth section held in the rear. Paralleling the LAV captain at the company level is the LAV sergeant who acts as the leader of the LAVs when the platoon leadership dismounts. They're also usually the crew commander for the platoon HQ's LAV. Typically they sit in the vehicle commander's seat, while the platoon commander sits in the rear passenger compartment. However, depending on personal preference, the platoon commander can also sometimes command the vehicle. The platoon commander is supported by the platoon signaler, and the platoon HQ LAV is operated by a driver and gunner. The driver and gunner may rank anywhere from private to corporal, the latter being equivalent to the stature of a US Army Specialist or US Marine Lance Corporal. The gunner is meant to be senior, with the theory being they can take over for the crew commander if they're disabled. Meanwhile, the rifle sections are the platoon's maneuver force. Each section consists of 10 personnel, with 3 vehicle crews and 7 dismounts per section. The section comes under the overall command of the section commander, usually ranking sergeant, who also leads the dismount element specifically. They're usually armed with a C7A2 rifle, although in some circumstances they could also be armed with a C8A3 carbine in lieu. On the ground, they're assisted by the section 3rd in command, who is essentially a dismounted 2IC. Generally, this position is filled by the senior most corporal in the section. In one respondent's unit in the 1st Patricias, they actually had the section 2nd in command to fill this position, who would rank master corporal. However, based on feedback from other units, this is probably just company SOP. The dismount element also has two machine gunners armed with C9A2 light machine guns. These machine gunners would usually be corporals as the logic goes more experienced soldiers should man the more important weapon systems. However, in most cases when we list a corporal or private billet, they can actually be manned by either. There are also two grenadiers armed with C7A2 rifles and M203 grenade launchers, as well as one rifleman armed with a C7A2 rifle and an M72 light anti-tank weapon. Additional M72s are held in each vehicle. The mounted element, meanwhile, would consist of a crew commander, also acting as the Section 2 IC and ranking Master Corporal. This position is also responsible for administrative aspects of the section, taking the load off the Section Commander and preparing reports for the platoon second in command. In the case of the first Patricia's respondent from just a moment ago, they made the crew commander the 3 IC rather than the 2 IC, so that they could focus just on the LAV while the dismounted 2 IC handled the official 2 IC tasks. Each section is then rounded out by a driver and gunner for the LAV. On the ground, the dismount element of each section usually breaks into fire teams. The exact composition of the fire teams varies unit to unit, especially if they're under strength, but it can be broadly broken into the following. The Alpha Team contains the Section Commander. Bravo Team contains a C9A2 light machine gun and either a rifleman or grenadier depending on the unit. At least one would be a corporal. Charlie contains either two grenadiers or a grenadier and a rifleman depending on the composition of the Bravo Team. Charlie would be the least experienced of the teams and usually be used as an assaulting element in the terminal phase of an attack. Delta Team would then consist of the Section 3 IC and another C9A2 light machine gunner. The logic here is that the Alpha and Delta Teams are at the opposite ends of a line formation, which may benefit control but also has a side benefit of spreading out the dismounted leadership, so one grenade doesn't kill the Section Commander and 3 IC in one go. There's no standard seating plan, but generally speaking, the C9 light machine gunners would be dismounting first, meaning they'd be sitting in the rear of the vehicle near the hatches. This would allow them to provide cover for the rest of the section as they filed out by fire team. The section commander would usually also sit near the rear, so they can make use of the ceiling hatches in the passenger compartment. In two respondents' companies in the 2nd Patricias, an 8th dismounted rifleman may have been used, which would then be added to the Alpha team with the section commander. However, as there are only 7 seats for dismounts and 8 men would require jamming in on one side, and manpower is often scarce to begin with, this is likely a unit-specific SOP. Additionally, some other service members claim that their section 3rd in command was also a grenadier, also likely a unit SOP. This fire team organization is optimal when in close range with the enemy during an assault, which when dismounting directly from the LAVs the section usually is. In more dismount centric operations or if the section needs to conduct a flanking maneuver with one element flanking and another supporting by fire, a group structure can also be used. 
This would entail the section splitting into Group 1 with 4 men and Group 2 with 3 men. Group 1 would be led by the section commander and further consist of a light machine gunner, grenadier, and rifleman. Group 2 would then be led by the 3 IC and consist of the same minus the rifleman. However, in conventional attacks, the section would usually dismount too close to the enemy for this grouping to be preferable. Moving on, the weapons detachment riding the platoon HQ's vehicle provides dismounted firepower to the platoon. It officially consists of four personnel, with one detachment commander ranking Master Corporal and three weapons operators. These operators usually rank Corporal rather than Private, as the Canadians prefer to put more experienced personnel on its support weapons. With four personnel, the detachment splits into a C6 gun team and a Carl Gustav team. The detachment commander would act as the assistant for the C6, directing fire for one of the weapons operators. The remaining two operators would then man the Carl Gustav. This weapon would usually be used in the defense and seldom in the assault. In a low armor threat environment, or if the Carl Gustav is otherwise not needed because tank support is adequate, the Carl Gustav team can be used for other tasks such as security, carrying ammo for the C6, acting as replacements for the rifle sections, or tending to casualties. In these situations, the Carl Gustav would typically be left in the vehicle. One respondent from the 1st Patricias states that in their unit, the weapons detachment never staffed above two people due to manpower shortages. In their unit, the Carl Gustav was kept in the depth section's vehicle to be operated by that section as needed. In Canadian terminology, a depth section is essentially equivalent to a reserve squad, kept towards the rear of a platoon formation that can reinforce the forward sections, deal with enemy POWs or casualties, or push past the first echelon's assault into the enemy's depth. And now I want to give a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters, especially our producers. Last month, our patrons got the full image files for our new poster featuring the Canadian Mechanized Rifle section, which is also available at our shop linked in the description. If you want to help Battle Order grow and get a bunch of perks including shoutouts, wallpapers, e-booklets, early access to videos and scripts, and patron-only chat on our Discord, consider becoming a patron at the link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.